I want you to remember with me just a minute the story of the children of Israel when they escaped from Pharaoh and it seemed like the enemy was going to destroy him. Let's look just a minute at this account. I know it's one that we all know about, but let's just think about it again in terms of just how it felt. This song talks about how it looked like sure despair was there and sure defeat, but how God turned it around to victory. Because in the next chapter we read their song of praise. And this song is their song of praise that they sang. And as you hear this song, remember how God is going to deliver you. I don't care what it is and how hopeless it seems. God is going to deliver you just like he did the children of Israel. the sound of the horses rising for battle and we heard the sound of the enemies surrounding us all one side we had to see on the other the enemy and we cried out why had God brought us here just to die and all we could see was a terrible slaughter all of us and our children a horrible death in the desert. But there was a man of God in the presence. But Moses stood up and he said, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will do for you today. For the Lord shall fight for you, the Lord shall fight for you. Yes, the Lord shall fight for you. The Lord shall fight for you. Yes, the Lord, he will fight for you. And ye shall hold your peace. Ye shall hold your peace. We will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown to the sea, hallelujah, hallelujah, the Lord is my strength and song, he has become my salvation, he is my God, I will prepare a habitation, the Lord is a man of war, the Lord is a man of war, thy right hand has become glorious in power, hallelujah, Lord, we praise you. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed into pieces the enemy. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord shall fight for you. Yes, the Lord, he will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. Yes, the Lord will fight for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is a mighty God. And he will cause his people to rise up and overcome. Hallelujah. He will fight for you. And you will overcome. Just like the children of Israel. I want to read you some of their story here in just a bit. I want you to hear this message. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. Hallelujah, Lord. And this is what Moses and the children of Israel sang this song unto the Lord. It's found in Exodus 15. You know, I had a thought here. We're reading this thousands and thousands and thousands of years later about how the glory of God came over them that day and caused them to overcome. And we're reading it because God wanted it placed there so you could hear these words when you're going through your battle. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them and I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. This is what God did. 
Thou didst blow with the wind, and the sea covered them, and sank them as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee, O God? Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Thou stretched out thy right hand, and the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth a people which thou hast redeemed. Let me say that again. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth a people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. I'm going to read it again. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth a people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength. In thy strength, O God. Fear and dread shall fall upon the enemy. By the greatness of thine arm they shall be as still as a stone until thy people pass over. O Lord, till thy people pass over which thou hast purchased. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance. In the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in. In the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established, the Lord shall reign forever and ever. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We've been through a season when it seemed the enemy was winning. All over the world, the church has gone through this time. A time when it seemed God has brought us here just to die. We heard the sound of the horses. The enemy surrounded us, rising for battle. And we could hear the sounds of our hearts racing for fear. Surely the end of time is here. And everyone is shaken with fear. But louder still we hear this. The cry of God's victory. The Lord shall fight for you. 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 you. And you shall hold your peace. We will sing unto the Lord. He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. He has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. And he has become my victory. He is my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him in the habitation. He will live in my heart. He will live in my mind. He will live in my ministry. He will live in my church. He will live in me and the work that I do for him. And God will lift me up. God will lift me up. Say it with me. God will lift me up. God will lift me up. God will lift me up. The Lord shall fight for you. The Lord, he shall fight for you. The Lord, he shall fight for you. The Lord, he shall fight for you. And he shall, he shall hold your peace. He is your strength and your song. He has become your salvation. You're not going to die in the desert. God has a plan of redemption for his people. He's buying them back all over the world. He's bringing them into victory. He's bringing them into victory. He's bringing them into victory. You'll see the victory of the Lord. Sure, it's the end time. And yes, we're going to see some things. But God is lighter than the darkness. God is brighter than the darkness. And he will lead you out. And you can sing victory song. You can sing the same song that they sang on that day. When it seemed like the enemy was going to destroy him. And then we're going to see the greatest glory of all. The time when we rise up to meet him. You're not going to see defeat. You're not going to see defeat. Hold on to the hand of the one 
who can overcome it all and you will overcome God will fight for you but God will fight for me sing it with me will fight for me God will fight for me my God will fight for me and I shall hold my peace and I shall I shall hold my peace. You know, I write this song in the middle of a time. I know what I'm talking about because we've been going through a time in our ministry when it seemed like the enemy would destroy us and wipe us out. And he had a plan. He had his little plan all worked out. But we're still here and we're still standing. Because God rose up. God rose up in our behalf and he said no more. This is the line. This is my bloodline. This is my bloodline. And devil, you can't cross it. These are my people. And I will fight for them. And they shall hold their peace. Hallelujah. We need more men of God like Moses. One of the things that Moses did constantly, he reproved the people of their sin. He told him there is a better way. And this is the only way. And this is the way you've got to get in to overcome and to see the victory of God. He sanctified them himself and then constantly. He called the people as God led him to. To sanctify themselves. And when they sanctified themselves. Then they saw the great victories that they saw. All the way through this thing. And that's the key. That's the key. Men of God, you have got to come out and sanctify yourself so that you can call your congregation to sanctification. And sad to say, the word sanctification, people don't even know what it means anymore. The definition of sanctify is to make holy, to set aside, to consecrate, to purify, free from sin, to make productive of a spiritual blessing. If you want a spiritual blessing in God, get out of sin. Get out of sin. Come out of those things. Now, I know we're not going to be perfect, but too many people use that as an excuse to not try at all. Set yourself aside. Set yourself aside from the world and stand up. Rise up and make a difference. And that's the only way that you can lead people to victory is if you understand this thing. And you understand it enough to tell the people and say, look, you need to come out of sin. You need to purify yourself. There's been so much compromise and it's been the thing. It's been the common thing among churches, but that's not God's word. And if you want to rise up and be a man of God that leads people out to victory, you have got to understand this and to apply it to your life. We need more men of God like Moses that'll look past the way it is and walk with God and see what God is saying it is and to rise up and to lead the people into victory. You can't give people hope if you don't have hope yourself and you can't have hope unless you're walking with God, listening to his voice, centering yourself in his word, being filled with his spirit. And that's another thing we've got to do. As men of God, we've got to rise up and ask God to anoint us. Put ourselves in the position where God can anoint us. Seek his face and seek his anointing. The key to that is love. If you'll read in the scriptures, you'll see over and over that the key to being able to be anointed to do for God is to find his love for his people. Find his love. Find the shepherd's love. For his sheep. And that's a very special love. And that will loose anointing of God. You know I mentioned here that that was. This, these are things for ministers. But we're all called to be ministers. Every one of us. Every child of God is called to be a minister of the gospel. And we all need to do these things. 
so that we can make a difference instead of being part of the problem that we can rise up and call people to victory and that they can see victory in our lives amen now i want to take just a minute here to clarify something too as well you know i've mentioned men of god men of god men of god and the bible mentions men of god but i guess you know that i know that god also calls women god calls women to speak god calls women to minister for him the bible says in acts chapter 2 in verse 14 this was in peter's sermon after pentecost had come and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith god i will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and all my servants and all my handmaidens i will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy so i'm not just talking about men of god but it's just like when the bible says it it's all mankind all people god is going to use those that are set aside for him sanctified walking in obedience to him seeking his gifts seeking his face seeking to be ministers in truth and in the word of god god will pour out his spirit on those and use them in a mighty way in these last days in a mighty way in these last days in a mighty way in these last days hallelujah